Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we have the Racer Star Tattoo F4S. Now this is a flight controller, it's an F4 flight controller. It's rocking the MPU 6000 gyro, which is the lot not sensitive one, which is the good one. And it has 32-bit ESCs, which are BL Heli 32, so that means it runs DSHOT 1200. And it also has a 5 volt regulator on board as well as beta flight OSD. So if this works perfect, this is by far one of the best budget fully all-in-one flight controllers with an ESC built in. Now I have tested the Star F3S which is uh, just regular ESCs which is DSHOT 600, BL Heli S ESCs built into it. And I have tested the Star F4S. Um, the Star F3S is, is has a lot more noise, so I would consider it to be towards more of the advanced level. Not really advanced, but someone who knows what they're doing might want to add low current filters, some low ESR capacitors, a voltage regulator, and can play around with his setup. Now, the Star F4S is just beautiful. Uh, voltage regulator, a low ESR capacitor, absolutely beautiful. I love it. It's my favorite so far. So between those two, it's the Star F4S. Now, I am hoping... And I am praying that this one is going to be just as good as the Star F4S. And um, it should be a, a, a winner, really. This could be one of the best budget all-in-ones out there. I know it's not very cheap, but it's one of the cheapest out there that can run BL Heli 32. Now, I don't know if it has telemetry. There's nothing specifying it, but there could be. I don't know. Once we set it up, we'll figure it out. So let's quickly go over the specifications here and the pad layout. So it's a 30 amp um, ESC, which, which is a 4 in 1 ESC, so each pad is 30 amp. And it's rated, I think, of 35 amp burst up to 5 seconds. Uh, it does have OSD, so it does have beta flight OSD, which is just perfect. Uh, you will need it also because, look, this is the problem with these boards. You see where they put the USB? That's where your camera's gonna be. So, um, yeah, you're gonna need Betaflight OSD. So it does have Betaflight OSD, which is very good. Um, let's just check the orientation now. So, we have the back here. ESC 1, 2, 3, 4, that's perfect Betaflight. So you would solder up your motors to these guys. And let's take a look at the upper pads here. So, as you can see here, they do provide us with a 5 volt, and it's very clearly red, but once you get down here, I'll try not to lose this so you won't have any issues. So, right here, let's just have it focus a little bit better for you. There we go. Alright, so we have 5 volt ground and video out. So, video out is where the yellow line to your VTX would go. And there's another ground, video in, this would be where your camera would come in. So it would be video in which is VI, would go to the OSD and pop right out of your video out to your VTX. And here we have another ground, we have another 5 volt and S bus. So I believe what you would want to do, and I don't know why they do it this way, it's kind of retarded in a way. Um, so basically you have S bus, 5 volt and ground, this would go to your receiver. This is how I would do it. And you have video in, which is the camera, and ground. Okay, that's cool, but I wish they would have brought this 5 volt here, then you would have gotten just finished with your camera right here, but that's totally fine. So you have video in, which is the camera, ground, and you have to take your 5 volt all the way from here. So that's kind of a pain. And video out, this would go to your VTX, and they do provide you with one ground, because obviously you're going to need to power your VTX through the battery terminals. But that's totally fine. Um, so basically this is going to need a low ASR capacitor and some kind of voltage regulator, depending on your VTX. I use the cheapest VTX I could find, and I love it, because I don't really fly with anyone, it doesn't really bother anyone. So I usually just set up a voltage regulator with a low ESR capacitor, and it's usually more than enough. Unlike the Star F3S, that one's giving me a little bit of issues, so we're gonna be adding a low current filter soon, an LC filter to that whole setup very soon on the channel to see if that'll clear it up, and it should clear it right up. So I'm hoping this one's going to be as clean as the Star F4S. Uh, I know they're both named the same, but this is the Tattoo F4S and the other one's just the normal F4S. So I really do hope in perspective of noise, it's going to be as good because that one is just performing absolutely beautiful. I really do love it. Um, it keeps your setup completely clean, completely easy. So if you're probably, I know it, if you're a beginner and 
this proved itself to be not noisy and very good and it could hold itself very well then this is one of the easiest way to set up your quadcopter you know you just have everything all into one so you have even a lower chance a lower risk of ruining something because all you have to do is just solder your motors in here but the you know the downside of that if you ruin this you ruin everything so it's kind of like a love-hate relationship if you want to say same thing with me if I ruin something on here basically this whole thing is down in the trash <clears throat> but if you don't ruin anything it's gonna be beautiful until something burns but other than that so far I've had good luck with them I've been flying them a lot lately and they've been doing just good the other two and hopefully this one this one I'm gonna be building it right after this video and then the build video will come up next hopefully uh, if everything goes as planned now I mean looking at it, it looks pretty clean there's really nothing to say what okay no no okay i was tripping i thought it had current sensor for each esc but i guess not you know what? actually just double check this because i didn't rip this off yet so actually yeah let's just take it apart here all right so when you take it apart try not to lose this because as you noticed uh the, towards the end here towards the usb they were not clearly labeled and that could cause issues um and that, that yeah so try not to lose it so something to note here as you can see look there's even more pads here for us to actually solder so as i see right here we have these two would be our buzzer right there so if i if, if i see correctly so that would be buzzer negative buzzer positive here we have some kind of other ground and here we have led this would be your signal for your led rssi port that's good and let's check these guys out okay so this is very important actually so here we have boot ground 3 volt rx6 and tx6 now for some reason when i connected ibus on the star f i think both of them actually uh the s bus would not uh, ibus would not work on the s bus port here so i found this rx6 and that's what i did exactly the same thing it was a pad like this and that's what I did. I set it up on RX6. In Betaflight, I set up UART6 as a serial RX, and I set up iBus, and it worked perfect. However, this is also set up here for using a Spectrum, I believe, or uh, some kind of Spectrum satellite, because you have a 3-volt uh, regulator right here for this pad right there. And here we have our boot button. We have our OSD. We have some LED right there. Um, I think this is a 3-volt regulator right here. It looks good. I mean, it looks... Very good. Doesn't have cheap voltage regulator for the 5 volts, so it should be fairly clean. Yeah, here's the gyro. Can you see it? The MPU 6000. That's very good. Very, very, very good. Um, this should perform. I do recommend you do some soft mounting on this guy. Uh, I've done it for the previous ones, and they're, they're just flying amazing. So this way you could just avoid, you know, any future problems that are unnecessary so that's that's just something to know. It's, it's good to always do that as well, soft mounting whenever you can. Now, well, I mean, looks good. We really can't say anything anymore. We do have current sensing, so that's very good. Uh, there's really nothing I could really say right now, so I'm really going to quickly just build it. But the thing is, I really don't know what motors to use with it. F40 version 3 or the Brother Hobby uh, 2700 KV. I just found those. So the, the, the Returner R4s 2700 KV. Uh, I'm going to be trying to not use such massive motors because... I just ruined all my batteries and I'm about to go just purchase and do a bunch of new batteries now because of the diatone. So I'm really trying to minimize using the 23XX and the 24XX, which is like the you know 2405 and all those kinds of motors. I'm trying to stick to like 2205, 2206 now because it's just ridiculous. Um, yeah, and they were graphene, so uh, yeah, so those took a beating. But anyways, overall, uh, we see some filtration here. These are nice fat capacitors, so that does do something. Uh, it's always good to see some, so that's a big plus here. And, well, hopefully it has some kind of telemetry. I mean, that would be such a waste, but, you know, we won't know until we set it up and we figure it out here. And I'm just trying to look around and see if we've missed something or there's something cool on here. Well, I mean, that's it. That's all I could really say. So let's just quickly take its uh, dimensions and then weigh it. And then we're going to end the video there. And next video, we'll be building this bad boy. Hopefully, he'll be good. So we're going to take right now the f the width of it, which is what's in inches. All right. So let me just double check it's zeroed out. Yep, zeroed out. All right. 
So 41.5, 41.6 is its width, if you needed to know that. Uh, let's just see its length to the tallest point here. Around the tallest point, let's just put it right in the middle right there. It's 50 millimeters. Okay, so it's 50 millimeters long and on the on the longest part and here it is 37.6 millimeters and let's just see the PCB thickness some people find that very important I don't um, around 2 millimeters we could say 2 millimeters 1.9 millimeters the PCB thickness not the thickest parts on the board itself so if we take the thickest parts and see the exact height of this guy um, let's just take it from one of the caps because that looks one of the highest points and I'm sorry I'm going to do this off camera because it's very difficult 55.8 millimeters so that's its overall height from the highest points on the board um, so yeah well this should be a good one alright guys so if anyone's used it please let us know down in the comment how that went for you I'll be building it right now and be testing it hopefully the upcoming days as i see right now the four upcoming days is full of storms here so i don't know when i'll get a chance to test it um but we will be testing it and i'll be reporting back with this so uh, that's all i can really say right now guys so if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and i will see you next time see you guys take care